The Tetragrammaton link itself is like Hellraiser. If your mind is screwed up and you are not ready, this thing is going to unfold on you like a Pandora's box and it's going to, it's going to eliminate you. And I can, that, that's something that I, I understand to be why they don't tell people about these names and these words. But in, in, in conclusion, what ended up happening was, is that so fast forwarding to the room that day so when i was reading okay so I, when i was reading and i started reading other stuff beside the bible i will always see them get to this point in the scripture and they would be like and he was given the name and then it would say nothing else and again as a person who went through the bible three times like i would notice certain the parts of the bible they'd be talking about this name but then they wouldn't give it and so i literally in, in allies and everything realized that everything came down to that name and i just needed to find that name so i started having shorty send me all these books and stuff about the name and finally one day i found it but by the time i found it it was already spoke of to be so terrible and so horrible like one dude described it in the end after the fact, it was similar to letting off a nuclear bomb inside of yourself, right? So I, when I found it, I kept it and I, and I didn't use it because I was like, because you know, you're kind of bred on this fear of God thing. And after I had seen you know, that this thing was real, I was like, I'm definitely not touching that. So I, you know, I kept it. So when that whole thing happened, when I was looking through ultraviolet light, the voice said, hey, I wonder if that tetragrammaton thing works like the hallelujah thing. You should try. <laughs> I kid you not. So I thought about that and I was like, hmm, maybe it does. And I got on my knees and I said it like three times. And then all of a sudden, like my body started vibrating. Like I felt like a vibration, like a real vibe. I was vibrating. I was like, this does something. And then I stopped it and I said, let me clean up everything because that was just something you were always trained that, you know, spiritual things, if you're in a dirty environment, you're gonna bring dirty things. And that's why I can only imagine again what these folks in the OTO really bought out because they're filthy. That's why I say filthy rich. So what happened was, is that, so I get all things, everything prepped up. I got one dude downstairs. He was like my driver and like my side guy. He was also my access into Vegas. Cause you know, you can't move through Vegas without like, you know, certain people with you, you know, in certain realms. So he was like that. And it was all benefit for him to always be around me. And so he was on the second level. And so he didn't know what was going on. So I, I started calling the name again. And when I got to like the fourth part, the fourth time, I realized that I couldn't stop saying it. Like I was trying to stop, but it was on some kind of sequence, like a generator. Then it felt like water was coming up my body. And then when it got all the way to my neck, I lost consciousness. I passed out for a moment and then I came to almost like in a millisecond and it was like boom boom okay like I went somewhere and then I came back but so fast but the reason why you knew you went somewhere was because the 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 hands the hands held everything that you that was in the place that you went and that's all i could remember doing was like just doing that and right away buddy comes in yo what's good you good and then he was like because everything was shaking it was weird because everything that could resonate was shaking but everything that couldn't like plastic wasn't and it created this weird warping effect a little bit and so he was like, he was looking for a minute and then he was like, why is everything shaking? And I was already like, and I grabbed him. And this is how I know whatever we are, it's, it can be transferred through touch, a high vibration. They call that Shakti and it's a real thing. So I touch him. Boom. He even jumps up and lands on the floor. Boom now we're going to jail basically this is because not only you know i was you know i'm all in this 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 
I'm still saying this word. Remember, I can't stop saying this word and it's getting louder and louder and he's coming in. Now he touched me. Now he's gone out of the body. I got to try to speed this up. He says what happened to him. Now, see, folks, so when I left, OK, when I left, it seemed like I went up and then I came back down in the body. He said when I touched him, he went down and then he said he saw himself. And then he grabbed himself and he was he tried to come up and he said as he was coming up because he was like flying, there was a hole and then all of a sudden the hole got small, small, small and he cl it closed on him. And he said he was just in there and he was like just there and, and then on this side of things, it looked like he had went crazy. He kept saying, yeah, blink, yeah, blink. Now remember, I'm still a very logical person. Like I'm the kind of guy I could be super high and the police roll up, hello officer. <laughs> it's like all that just turns off. And that's what I think that's what mental superiority does, right? So while this is going on, I still got another narrative like, boy, this, we, the, the folks pull up, if the neighbors call the police, so I'm still, you know, slightly trying to police the situation in my own mind while going through that we didn't blew open a portal. So anyway, long story short, this dude, now this dude, he was a pimp, right? Because that's pretty much what you got going on in Vegas. And those are the people that are, you know, carte blanching different situations. And we had big parties and things going on. So this dude grew a beard. <laughs> he married his main girl and got her pregnant. And she was already pregnant, had a baby by her, got rid of the rest of the prostitute. Meaning that from the contact, he's, his whole life changed. Right. For me, it was a series of events. And that's why I said, you know, to, to start off or for finish where we started off. You asked me about what was going on at the Vatican where there's a portal or something there where they can not do overwatch. So apparently, again, like a like a water door, there's some type of crystal ball, if you may, that you can look in the Va where the Vatican is because of where, where the portal that's there. You can look and see the world. But mainly what you're looking for is people who are activating. They're like, you can see them in the sky. They're lighting up. That, so is, I kid you that not. is like crazy. Like, because that kind of <laughs> like the star of Bethlehem, the three wise men, like that's crazy. Yo, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's like, so they regulate the reality by knowing who's on high vibration. Cause it's like, you can see everybody up, but then there, when there's that bright blip, it's like, okay. Um, detail and literally so but see my 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 higher self until i eventually merged was giving me and schooling me on everything that needed to be done but i was i ain't gonna lie i was blowing it like i had so many ideas and thoughts happening at one time when i was told to do something i would like forget i was told to do that and then it would lead to another crazy circumstance and then i would just have to go through that process so it was like falling down a ladder of mistakes and the first thing that I was told to do is to get grounded, to ground. And it, and it gave me, I had this rug, okay? So this is how you also know it's all a setup. Here's another example. So I had this penthouse. I moved into the penthouse. I had no ideas. We were going to be doing no mantra or nothing like that going on in this house. So on the second level, this thing had a tapestry rug that I had bought. And it was a rectangle. When the, uh, when the wavelength came through, it was like, turn the corners of the rug in. And it made up perfect octagon. And on top of that, the skylight in the house pointed at the number 12 on the rug. That ain't something that when I moved all that stuff, it was configured like a clock. And you walked around this thing and it said, it told me, it said, look, walk around this until your legs get strong. And see, now that I know about occultism and all of that, I know that an ungrounded person with Kundalini, because what I've had is, is a Kundalini awakening. Right. And I can, you know, I often wonder if you can fill the ineffable name in with anything that you say for three hours, <laughs> because there's a certain point like we're reaching right now and beyond where you just get filled with your own vibration and echo and frequency and you could keep going higher and higher. And if you attach that to a narrative and this narrative is you've just called the ineffable name of God and God is now here, which was what was going on in my mind. This is how I was riding this. And I was seeing everything, Sanchez. You were, first of all, you didn't look in anybody's eyes. 
you look through this thing immediately went and picked up a, a uh, uh, obsidian ball. OK, and you look at the reality through the ball, because if you look at the reality, it's the moment somebody locks eyes with you, you can see everything and you don't want to see. And the first thing that's on the front of their mind is the thing that they care about the most. OK, so you're kind of walking around with this hoodie on. And so they kind of throw Philly in as an attache, meaning the guy that was with me, he was like like the support system. And this is why I think like sometimes these activations, they happen in duels because there's almost like a pairing system and a balancing system that was going that needs to go on even in the beginning. Right. So he was instructed <laughs> to do certain things because somehow he was actually on the wavelength. But the problem was his thoughts were also on the wavelength. And sometimes I would confuse what he was thinking for what the voice was telling me to do. And in one case specifically, it was it went to so left to my detriment. I could not I did not I chose not to be around him anymore because they kept telling him. First of all, this is not any of our show anymore. Just take the transmission, do what you need to do. You're already late. So any interruptions to that was like agitating for this force that was trying to wake my ass up. And here's another thing that I saw that I said that was confusing. So when I started walking around that rug, after about four or five turns, it was like the whole middle part opened up. And Sanchez, it felt like somebody was leaning over it and looking at you. And I swear it felt like old white men. It was strange even for me to say that or think that at that moment. I was like, are those old white men? <laughs> and until recently, I didn't figure out what was that connection. But it was because they were voyeuring in and looking and they were laughing and sniggling. It was negative. Damn. It was like they knew that there was a cultation taking place, but they hated me. You see what I mean? And that's what I was saying. Like, sometimes you're not even sworn in it. You're born in it. Right. So I'm going, but is it going to be the next trip up for you? You be one step. They say when you're on the crown shocker, you're one step from, from graduating the whole thing. So I ain't finna blow all this for some cocky ego and a few other trips around the matrix, just getting a little starlight. No. <laughs> so listen, I'm, look, I'm gonna finalize this. This is what happened. So now I'm on this journey and what it does, I'm just teaching you the key fun or talking about the T fundamentals, right? Cause you already know all this. So here's what the things seem to need to do. It made me make a list. It was like, pull out a paper and write this down. I pull out a paper and it started writing down a list of all the people that I had met since I came in Atlanta, mainly the main people. My guy, like at this stage of the high life in Atlanta, I may write my name. OK, <laughs> let alone everybody else's and who they are. And this list was in order of the time that I met them, like in the order that I met them. And then when I, so when I went through this occultation, I would bump into the person literally. And they would hit me up like, yo, Seb, what's good, man? I've been looking for you, man. Yo, guess what? I got this and this and this. And then what would happen is it would be like this, like what they were saying were going. And then the voice would come in and say, you see? You see what they think about you? That's all you're good for. And what they've done is, is they've created a form and that's what's binding you to this place. That's why you're now in downtown. So you probably should convince them that you're not into that anymore. And I will go in. The words are backwards. Do you get it? Backwards. <laughs> by, by 10 minutes, they'd be like, damn. OK, my nigga, let me know where you where I drop you off. Because remember, I was heavy. So Castle was like, you know, I got exotic cars and the whole nine. So they like they seeing me walking. I had an exotic rental car company. I'm walking in, in, in Ferragamo boots. They were the last thing that survived because they they was durable. And I'm walking through because I was told well, I was like, what do I need to do? It's like, man, walk. And I'm walking all night. I'm going to show you something. And so I'm looking and I'm seeing. So so I even have a time where I'm, I'm, I'm outside, right? I'm I late at night walking and the source is like them over there. Go and talk to them. And then I go walk over there and there's two, two, two people there sitting on, sitting by the ground on the ground. Hey, what's going on? And then they look at me and they're like, we're, I swear to you, this lady said, we're serving the beast. And I said, where? <laughs> 
And she said, right there. And she was pointing at the AT&T building, right? But me and they were really, they had some magical shit out in there. Like, you know how little five points in all these places, they always got little five points in these places, right? Because they work magic. But the beast was the AT&T building. The whole, you could even see it. Like when she said it and you looked, you was like, oh shit, that is a beast. And it's because how they build these beasts, they build the beasts of steel and rock and iron. And then they infuse the souls of humans on the workforce. And they in there in the corporation and the body of the entity. Right. They're animating the entity. Right. But then the entity is an idol line and it's out of control. Nobody controls AT&T, <laughs> even the shareholders. So originally, like I pointed out in Pentagram, it, it was created by a Kabbalist, but now no one's holding up the ritual. So the Eidolon is thinking for itself. That's what they were talking about. Like Nike, Nike is another one. And the Eidolon will enslave and kill and hurt. And it acts like it's a being. And these occultists, they try to tap it. And they try to tap into it. So this is what's really going on in those sanctums, right? So, so when I see this, so I'm walking through, I see weird symbolism now. I'm talking to bums. I'm talking to people on the last day of their life. So I know that, yo, if you still in, you're not going to be forgotten about. You may be taken through a hell of a lesson. Like I would take it through a bum lesson in there, but when I, when I went to a, to a lesson with a bum and I was giving him the whole nine and tears start rolling down his face. He said, I know I'm going to die. I knew I was going to die today. But to believe that the, the, then it's called the most high, that the most high would send you with this message and he died. So look, it got so crazy that I was I was at certain points where I didn't want to I didn't want to put any hindrances anymore. I wanted to see the whole thing. So I ran into one of my best friends. He was on the list. I gave him the business. And then he was like so shook about the whole thing. He was just like, where do I drop you off? I say in the cemetery. On the Jewish side, it's peaceful in there. Right. He dropped me off at the cemetery. I walk in over the Jewish side and I pick up a stone, which is the, the salt stone. And when I pick up the stone, the stone saying the shambi, meaning it says his name. And I'm thinking, man, even the Jews, they even know how to <laughs> still be talking to they to, to they people or they think they know how to talk to their people through these crystals and these stones because that's what's going on on the Jewish side of the cemetery. So I'm like just getting mega downloads. And then I finally run into my final person. And also I do know folks from the community with York and all that too. So it was kind of like a weird thing that was happening. And in the end, I end up seeing this dream with York being very upset at me because another man, all white jellabias, all these men, dark men with white jellabias, he was told to pass, he was made to pass something that he had to me, like a mantle, right? And that could be potentially the, the mission that the Sybils put him on because they that's who was running the community. They have a crescent moon banded on their forehead. The Sudanese women, remember he went to Sudan and studied occultism. That's why he, he, he started doing initiations. But then as they say about Raboni, and you know, that's just in all respect to all the Nawapu, you know, when you got that hole in character flaw, remember York was like one of the temptations. Like he, he, he was like that in his dynamic. It was really him that was like, y'all, wherever the, they say, wherever the, wherever the lamb go, these shall follow. That was the mode in the community when it really started. Now I wasn't in the community. I was just dialed in with some of the people synchronistically. Here's another thing that the reason why, cause when I left, when I left Christianity also Sanchez, cause I had been a Muslim early in my life. My mother raised it. She was, my mother was in the movement. Like we, that, I'm talking about like when Wall of D Muhammad split away from the from the from the movement and went with the with the five times a day prayer. My mom went with that and that that all that tore Farrakhan and all that tore the community so that I'm from Detroit. So this is this is my time, but I'm still a little kid. Right. And man, you know, like I'm trying to make a long story short here, but the reality was is that so I'm I'm still going through spiritual experiences early in life that is still preparing me for this. And that's why I always say that we live life forward, but we understand it backwards. Right. Why are we always reflecting on everything to give us the idea of what we should do next? Could it be that we're moving backwards? And so that's why when the whole code came I wrote the code of the matrix, right? So and I gave the book away for free. But Sanchez, when I wrote that book, I was dipping out of the reality. I was like, I kept asking, so what do I need to do next? I didn't know how it was going to appear to everybody else. Didn't care. 
I just knew that I was going to be caught up and I was going to leave the planet. I had already seen more than that. So that was like my whole intentions to get to that stage. So in conclusion, I ran into the last person on the list, which happened to be one of my ex exes. I stayed at her house last, changed her ideas of me. The, the vibration was so like connected, even when I had to ask now, since I was done with everybody on that list, what should I do? Where should I go? <laughs> right then a commercial came on TV about Costa Rica. I had a magazine in my hand and I had just flipped through the page and it said Costa Rica. Shorty, when she came in, cause she went out to, to throw something in the, in, in the trash and she came back and she said, Jan, cause she was an Indian chick. She said, Jan, have you ever been to Costa Rica? So this is what I was dealing with Sanchez for two weeks. Now remember all this that I'm talking about is, is over the span of two weeks. I don't think you could handle any more than two weeks of this. I'm still cooling off. And also the data that was transferred, since we now kind of understand a little bit more about what's going on, the data that was transferred, it was like, it was in another language. It was like in another code. So like this code could not unpack it at all, like very fast. It was like, I was always like having that aha moment and gems being dropped in my mind, but slow. And it was, it was grueling to watch, I can imagine, because it was just like, I wasn't really getting it, but I felt like I was. And then pretty soon the wheels start turning and I started learning more of the words and I started seeing how it was all tied into my life and everything. And then that's all I use now as a guide. That's like my own nautical system. But that's how I'd also know that sometimes when you're reading a book, you can start reading about yourself <laughs> and then you can be casted as the bad guy and he'd be like yo the james you know and king james or seven and the devil and set and and then it's like but that's anybody though <laughs> to be honest like i can take everybody and break it down and that's that but it's about what are you going to be doing this life so man like that's that's that opus man like <laughs> man